بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم مشتاق علی ایک وقت فری ایمنا پروگرام حاضر چھے جم کے لاس ویک میں کدھلو ڈیابیٹیز پر کے کٹلو ضروری چھے کہ آپ نے اپنی ہیلتھ نو خیال راکھی انہیں ڈائیبیٹیز جیوی ایلنس جب وہ کومن چھے یہ آپ نے کوشش کروی جو ہے کہ آپ نے نو تھا ہے انہیں آپ نے ڈائیبیٹیز ہوئی تو آپ نے آپ نے بلڈ شگر نے کنٹرول کرو جروری چھے ہوئے آ وقت میں نے گھنی ریکویسٹ آوی چھے کہ جی مان سو گجراتی نتی سمجھتا تو یہ لوگ کو نے ریکویسٹ آوی چھے کہ ہوں آ وقت ایچ پروگرام اردو ماں انہیں انگلیش ماں کرو تو آ وقت مارا جی بائی بینوں انگلیش نتی سمجھتا ہے تو یہ میں نے ایکسکیوز کر جو اس کام کے آج آ وقت ہوں اپنا بھائی بینوں جے گجراتی نتی سمجھتا تو یہ لوگ کو نا بینیفیٹ مارتے ہوں آج نو پروگرام انگلیش ماں کری سے For the benefit of uh, my viewers who do not uh, understand uh, Gujarati, today I'm going to talk on diabetes and good health. Diabetes is a condition that causes high level of sugar stroke glucose because sugar is glucose in our blood. Because our pancreas do not produce enough insulin to move glucose from the blood stream into the cells of our body for energy. If our body does not make enough insulin or cannot use the insulin it makes, uh, which is also called insulin resistance, then sugar stays in the blood and cannot move uh, into the cells to give energy to work properly. So in very simple words, uh, when there is too much sugar in your blood and it's not transferred to the cells in your body, uh, it stays in the blood and uh, there is a fine threshold. Uh, and if you exceed that threshold, if you go above that, then you are diagnosed as diabetic. Now, it is a very, very common illness and people sometimes either take it very lightly or, or other people take it uh, very, very seriously. So both the extremes, in my opinion, are incorrect. Now, I must make uh, this point uh, very clear here that I'm not a medical doctor uh, or uh, I do not specialize in any medical practice, uh, but this uh, is uh, a field in which I'm very interested because uh, I'm myself uh, a type 2 diabetic for over 20 years. And uh, I have uh, done a number of experiments with my diet, so on and so forth, we will come to that. And that is why uh, I think and uh, I consider that it's important that people should hear me out and if I can benefit any of you out there who have diabetes or uh, who are on the borderline or who have very chronic very severe type of diabetic, I think this program will help you. In UK alone, 4.7 million people are diabetic. 4.7 million people. On top of that, uh, there are 12.3 million people uh, who are at increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Worldwide, more than 371 million people have diabetes. Now these are very, very high figures and in everyday life uh, we see that, you know, people do say that my sugar level is high, my sugar level is on the borderline, but it doesn't have to be like that. So obviously uh, we will go into further 
uh, discussion regarding this and uh, we will also see how we can control our di diabetes and uh, uh, do things which will either prevent uh, us to be diabetic uh, and uh, if we have diabetes we, we can keep it uh, as low as possible and try and control our blood sugar level. Now type 2 diabetes is much more common than type 1 and tends to develop gradually as people uh, get older, usually after the age of 40. But more and more people are linked closely with diabetes because either they are uh, overweight, they are physically inactive or they have a family history of diabetes. Uh, and it is much more common than the, uh, in this country or in the Western world uh, than the uh, locals uh, because of uh, much more common in ethnic groups like South Asian and uh, African Caribbean. Now, Dr. Jason Fung says, asks us a question, is, diabetic, uh, di is diabetes chronic and progressive? Is it reversible? And he gives an answer to that, that it is not chronic and progressive. It is reversible and curable. However, people think that if they have drugs, that it can cure the diabetes. But Dr. Fung is of the opinion that drugs cannot cure a dietary disease uh, because uh, if you control your diet then your diabetes will be under control and if you control your diet from an early age the chances of you having diabetes uh, are much less and even if you have diabetes you if you control your diet, if you do exercise, if you control and manage your stress, uh, if you are a relaxed person, um, if you are not overweight, if you are not smoking, then uh, the, the chances of not having diabetes are much, much higher, like 80, 90, 95 percent depends on your age as well because as you grow older uh, if somebody in your family has had diabetes then uh, you are likely to be diabetic because one of the main causes of being diabetes is uh, hereditary nobody has conclusive results that why a person has diabetic so all these factors i'll be throwing light on it as i go along and uh, you will see that you know how how it can benefit a person now uh, diabetes uh, if if you are diagnosed as a di diabetic patient like for example if the doctor sends your blood for test and your hba1c uh, comes back and it's uh, high the doctor will say you are diabetic and will prescribe you a medication. However, in my opinion, if you are diagnosed diabetic uh, at an early stage, it's better to avoid medication and go straight on a strict diet and exercise. Because once you start medication, uh, and you're not careful about your diet and you do not exercise the doctor will only increase your medication and uh, the diabetes will get worse as time passes by mm, uh, and if you are poor in exercises if you do not take your, uh, care of your diet your diabetes uh, as I say will get worse and uh, the doctor will prescribe you more medication and then more medication. Uh, I'm telling you this from my personal experience. I've been diabetic for the last approximately about 20 years. And obviously if there is no awareness, if you do not know as how, why you had diabetes, what you should do if you have diabetes, how you can control your blood sugar level, what sort of food you should eat, all these things 
uh, if you're not aware, then your diabetes will not improve. And no doctor will tell you in detail as to what you should do to control your diabetes. Of course, they will tell you briefly, okay, do exercise, uh, go for walking, control your blood sugar level, control your diet, uh, and go and see diabetic nurse. The diabetic nurse will, of course, uh, examine your feet and see that, you know, your feet are okay in the sense that it has to be, uh, uh, it has to be uh, alert and it has to be sensitive. Uh, there should should not be any numbness. Similarly, you are sent for an eye test because diabetes is a disease uh, type 2 diabetes, even type 1, but type 2 more commonly is a, a disease if not controlled, it can affect other organs of your body, like it can affect your eyesight, it can affect your nose, you can, if not controlled, you can have a heart attack, you can have a stroke, it can damage your kidneys. So you can see uh, there's so many illnesses which uh, you can be affected if uh, your sugar level is not controlled. Therefore, it's so important to control your sugar level uh, and change your diet from an early stage, especially if you have somebody diabetic like your parents or grandparents in your family uh, who is diabetic. Now, um, what are the signs and symptoms of diabetes? The signs and symptoms of diabetes are as follows. You'll feel thirsty, you'll be going to the toilet much more than an ordinary person uh, to urinate, uh, you'll feel very tired and you might lose a lot of weight unexpectedly, uh, your vision might be blurred uh, and your cuts or wounds heal, will heal slowly. Uh, and, uh, uh, you might have genital itching or regular episodes of thrush. All these signs and symptoms, if you have, then please uh, do not ignore it. Go and see a GP, get your blood tested, inform your GP that you have all this, and your GP will, will send your blood test, will take your blood test and send it to the laboratory, and there is a special blood test for diabetes which is called HbA1c as I mentioned early. This gives you your uh, sugar in your blood called blood sugar level HbA1c which is an average of last three months. Uh, it's a very good test and will indicate whether you have diabetes or not, whether your sugar level is good, is bad or it's very good so on and so forth. So that must be done if you have these symptoms. Now, how is it diagnosed? How uh, one can tell that, you know, Mr. A, Mrs. A, Mrs. B has, di uh, has diabetes? You take your blood sugar, uh, glucose levels or sugar level and uh, uh, prick your finger if you have got that instrument at home and measure your blood sugar level. Otherwise, you go to the surgery, as I said, and have uh, HbA1c uh, done. The third check is that your GP can send you for a blood glucose tolerance test, which is another test uh, which, which uh, can indicate whether you are on the borderline or your high blood sugar level or whether it's controlled or not. Now, how to reduce the risk of developing diabetes. One, you have to be more active, meaning you must do some sort of exercise. You must go for a walk, if you can do jogging, depending on what your age is, uh, then jogging is very good, otherwise a regular walk once or twice a day is very, very good. Uh, if you can't do that and if you're not diabetic, you're just trying to reduce the risk of developing diabetes, then uh, you should walk at least three, four times a week. But people who have diabetes, they must walk at least once a day. Or 
even if possible twice a day and be more active. The more active you are, the better it is because once you are active, you are burning your energy. You are using your sugar level which is in your blood. So your sugar level automatically comes down if you are active. Secondly and most importantly, eat a healthy balanced diet. Now I'll be expanding this that what is a healthy balanced diet as we go along in the program. Give up smoking if you are smoking. Control your weight because if you are overweight it doesn't help. You have to lose weight in order to reduce your risk of developing diabetes. Be aware of the family history especially if you have diabetes in your family, meaning your par one parent or both parents or your grandparents or your uncle uh, or elder brother or sister, then the chance of you having diabetes, as I said earlier, are much, much higher. <coughs> because of the lungs. Control your stress. Be relaxed. This is also a factor which uh, nobody tells you but it's important that you don't lead a stressful life. If you're leading a stressful life then again it will affect your sugar level. You have to be relaxed. The more relaxed you are uh, uh, the, mo uh, the more chances there are that your sugar level uh, will be under control. Also in, uh, uh, lastly, another important factor is you should have enough sleep. Now, different people can get away with sleep uh, uh, with different hours. You know, some, uh, some people require six hours, other people require eight hours. So anything which, is, which makes you feel comfortable and you're fresh in the morning, so you should take that amount of sleep. Maybe six hours, maybe eight hours, maybe seven hours, maybe eight and a half hours. But enough sleep is necessary. Now, how do you manage your type 2 diabetes? You control your blood glucose level. You control your blood pressure as well. You reduce your cholesterol level to reduce the risk of developing heart and circulatory diseases uh, example, coronary heart disease, heart attack, and uh, stroke. Now, as I said earlier, uh, healthy lifestyle is very, very important. Now, the question is, what is a healthy lifestyle? Healthy lifestyle means uh, your diet must be controlled. You exercise on a regular basis. You manage your stress level, you have enough sleep. Now, as far as exercise is concerned, you need to exercise regularly. Because as I said earlier on, uh, just diet alone will not reduce uh, your sugar level or those people who are not diabetic. Uh, their risk of developing uh, diabetes will be increased uh, if they have uh, diabetes in the family. Also, it depends uh, at what age you are. Because once you are diagnosed diabetes, as I said, it will only get worse if you don't have lifestyle changes. So lifestyle changes are must. Exercise regularly, be active, walk regularly, uh, and if you can't go out uh, for walking, if the weather is bad, if it's raining, and those people feel that, you know, uh, it's not good because it's raining, you should be active at home. You can do housework. Housework from, there's a number of housework you can do which will keep you active. You can do light exercises at home, only takes 15 minutes. You can do or carpet cleaning, you can do vacuuming uh, at home. Uh, also, just walking up and down from the first floor. Uh, don't be lazy, don't ask other people to 
just do everything for you within the house, like the children or the wife, because that will make you inactive. Uh, try and remember that, you know, this is very important. And if you are not active, then uh, you have increased chances of having diabetes, especially if you have diabetes in the family. Stop smoking and change your diet. The our usual diet, uh, we are we are very uh, tuned. We are very accustomed to having uh, sugary food, like for example, sweets, chocolates, uh, mitai, uh, gartia, chevra, uh, so on and so forth. So. If you want to reduce the risk or if you have diabetes uh, and say for example if you, the doctors prescribe medication and if you have started medication, as I said earlier, you've got to change your lifestyle, exercise, change your diet. If you cannot change your diet, then with the passage of time, as time passes by, your diabetes will get worse. If you continue eating chocolates, mithai, Gulab Jamun, uh, Ras Malai, and all other Indian Mithai, uh, chocolates as well, uh, and all those food which have high sugar and high carbohydrate, that will definitely uh, improve, that will definitely increase your sugar level, and with the result that your HbA1c after a period of time will get worse, the doctor will prescribe you more medication and uh, once more medication is prescribed, you will still be used to the same lifestyle, uh, not improving your eating habits and then the medication will go on increasing. So this is no good because medication A has its effects, every medication has its side effects, B how much longer or how, uh, how much more medication you can have. To me, when I wasn't aware of uh, various steps um, to be taken, as I'm saying now, about three years ago, four years ago, although I was exercising, not on a regular basis, I was dieting, but there were certain things I wasn't careful, which I'll tell you in a moment. So my sugar level was up and down, up and down. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, I was on almost a maximum medication. I was taking metformin, about a thousand, two tablets of 500 mg each in the morning, two tablets of 500 each in the evening. I was also prescribed a medication called glycoside. I was having 160 mg, I think, in the morning and 160 mg of glycoside in the evening. Now this is the maximum glycoside one can have. Maybe metformin, I, uh, I could have had more, but still it's a heavy dose uh, of 1000 mg of metformin and 160 mg of glycoside. Why? Because I wasn't that strict with my diet. Secondly, I was also diabetic for a long period of life, meaning long period of time, meaning that I was diabetic for about 16, 17 years when I started taking it very, very seriously uh, about two years ago. Not that my sugar level was totally out of control, it was within, within acceptable uh, levels, within acceptable HbA1c. Uh, but I thought that such high dosage of uh, medication is no good. Also, I was always very interested in walking, but I wasn't doing it on a regular basis, maybe two hours, twice a week, three times a week, sometimes a whole week would go away, and uh, I, w uh, I would exercise only one day. So all these were contributory factors uh, for the doctor to prescribe me high medication. I wasn't eating the stuff which I should eat. 
uh, I was eating uh, mo I was eating lots of chapatis I was eating rice as well now those people who are diabetic and whose sugar level is high and want to reduce their medication so for them I would suggest that they should they should uh, reduce uh, their uh, chapati intake and rice intake. Now I'm being asked to take a break at this stage and I'll be back with you to discuss uh, this important subject after the break. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.